All right, guys, so we got about four questions here. These were sent in by some uh, people who just wanted to kind of have this reviewed, so no problem at all. Uh, the first one, um, essentially, remember, when you see a long problem, make sure you go down to the very last sentence because that's where the question's at, and that'll let you, allow you to focus on what to really what's important up top. So which of the following tests best describes this method of disease prevention? And, of course, they're asking about this whole primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary types. So... Long story short, I mean, you have to know these uh, basically for this, all the step exams. And we've got to know that primary, and kind of a shout out to one of the guys who left the comments uh, section for this, uh, primary prevents, secondary, as they say, screens, and then tertiary, and these are the main ones, tertiary treats, okay? And so in, an example of a primary prevention that's preventing the disease from occurring, of course, that's going to be your vaccination, right? The disease doesn't, is, is not existent. We're trying to make sure that that does not happen. The secondary prevention is going to be your screening test, right? And an example of that one would be like a colonoscopy, right? Now, the key with that one is, is understanding that that can either prevent the disease or it will kind of decrease the morbidity of the disease, right? So like a colonoscopy, you might have polyps and stuff, but you're just going to prevent it from getting to the point where there's actual symptoms, all right? So primary prevention, there is nothing. It's going to, it's going to prevent uh, it from occurring. Secondary is going to screen for the test and either prevent the disease or decrease more uh, morbidity. And then tertiary is obviously going to treat, and that's just going to be your basic medication, so the disease is present, okay? And then this whole quaternary thing, you know, you can think of that as uh, when they say that it's it's like not spending, uh, not spending money or any type of resources, uh, you know, on something that really doesn't have, uh, that doesn't work per se. So you have to know these are your big three, okay? Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Primary prevents, secondary screens, tertiary treats. Now, this question: Fifty-year-old male presents to his primary care physician for routine workup. He reports that he's doing well overall without bothersome symptoms. His past medical history is distinctive for hypertension, which has been well controlled with Losartan. Uh, vital signs, da 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 da. There's respiratory pulse ox. Everything looks good. Physical exam does not reveal any, any concerning abnormalities. The physician recommends a fecal occult blood test at this visit to screen. Of course, they're giving you a nice little word there for the presence of any blood in the patient's uh, stool. Uh, that might be suggestive of an, of an underlying colorectal cancer, and then which the following best describes this. So just the fact they, they gave you, uh, you know, they essentially gave you the, the key word for screening, and so you're going to jump all over uh, secondary in that sense. But again, primary prevents, secondary screens, tertiary treats. Okay? And now this one says... The incidence uh, of chronic disease in a population may be decreased by which of the following? Now, incidence, right? We, always, we talked about that in one of the longer, uh, longer videos, uh, lectures, that incidence has an N in it. So you always think incidence is going gonna, is gonna to mean the number of new cases. So which of these is going to prevent uh, the number of new cases? Is it prolonging the lives of people with the disease? No, because that's not going to help anything as far as the number of new cases, so it's definitely not that guy. Decreasing case fatality. No, these people already have disease. We're trying to prevent new cases. Improving treatment of the disease once it's diagnosed. No, that's just going to prolong, right? It's going to increase, like, uh, prevalence. And then, uh, no, excuse me, it's not going to increase prevalence. Imp improving the treat, yeah, improving the treatment. Uh, so technically people, I guess in theory, could live longer, so it could in increase prevalence. Uh, primary prevention, right? That's going to primary. That's going like an example is your vaccine, right? So that is going to prevent. So I, I kind of like that one. And then secondary, um, essentially, that could possibly have where the disease, disease is already present. So the answer choice in this to prevent the new is going to be primary. Again, primary prevents, secondary screens, tertiary treats. Now this one says, what is the positive predictive value of the physician's exam? Now, you know you're going to get in a question on this positive predictive value, negative predictive value, sensitivity, specificity. Whenever you see this, we talked about it, you always draw the box. And this is more of a review, but it's, it's important because you're going to get that question hands down. So you always put reality on top, and you always put the test on the side, and it's positive, negative, uh, positive, and negative. And then, what does this question say? So we want the positive predictive value. So we know that's top left going to the right. 
correct? And so whatever we, and if you want, we can just kind of label these boxes. Whatever we circle goes on top, and whatever thing we connect with the arrow goes on the bottom, okay? So that is technically going to be our positive predictive value, but we got to fill in the box first, right? So what did they give us? It says, a, a physician examined a population of 1,000 patients in an attempt to detect uh, heart disease. The prevalence of heart, di of heart disease in this population is known to be 15%. The sensitivity of the physician's exam is 60%, and specificity is 80 uh, Patients who test positive for the physician for the physician are sent by examination, sent for examination by the cardiologist, blah, 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 blah. All right, so we got to, you know, we can solve anything as long as we can fill in these boxes, right? So what do they give us? They say the prevalence of heart disease is known to be 15%. So that means how many people actually have it is 15. So in reality, how many people actually have it is going to be 15%. Now they say there's a thousand people in this thing. So, you know, if we wanted to go 15%, um, you know, you could essentially say 100, 150 people. All right, so we could, we could say that. And then, you know, n equals 1,000. So then how many people in reality don't have the disease? Well, we just have to subtract that, right? So that's going to be uh, 850 don't have it. So everybody in this column is going to equal 150. Everybody in this column is going to equal 850. All right, so we're one step closer. Now it says the sensitivity of the physician's exam is 60%. So we know that sensitivity is top left going down. So in theory, 60%, or remember in math, we don't like percents, we like to use uh, decimals. So 0.6 is, is equal to A, right? Top left going down, so it's A is what we circled over A plus C, the two boxes that we connected, okay? And it says the um, specificity is 80%. Now we know specificity is the bottom right going up. So the 80% or 0.8 equals D, because that's the box we circled, and then the boxes we connected with the line are gonna be D plus B. But so what do we know so far? We gotta fill in these boxes, right? Well, we said that this whole column equals 150, and that's A plus C. So A plus C equals 150. So in theory, I can just go ahead and you know, I can just go ahead and put that guy right there, and that's a 0.6, and that'll give me A, and that's what I want, right? I want A, so I just got to solve this right here. So in theory, I can go 0 0.6 times 150, and, you know, I can, or I can, I guess I can be lazy and go 6 tenths and start dividing. Divide by 5, I get 2. Divide by 5, I get... 30, I can go down to 15, and that's going to give me a 90, okay? A equals 90, and that's fine. And so now I'm left with this one, so I know that B plus D equals 850, okay? And that's over D, and that equals 0.8, so it's kind of the same scenario over here. So I can go 850, I can go times 0.8, so of course on the exam you're actually going to use your calculator, but since we... I don't have that handy. I'm going to say 0.8 is 8% or 8 over 10. Okay, and I can divide by 10, and I get 1, and then I get 85, and then I have to kind of multiply that. 85, 8, 0, 4, 68, so 680. So 680 actually equals D, right? But that doesn't, I, but I need B, right? I need, I need B to make the positive predictive value. So how do I figure that out? Well, if this whole column equals 850, and this is 680, so then 850 minus 680, and I'm gonna get 170, right? 170. So now, in theory, I could get every box in here. If I wanted this box right here, what would I do? I'd take 150 minus 60, I mean 150 minus 90, and give me the 60. So once you have all the numbers for the boxes, I don't care if they gave you sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value or negative predictive value, you'll be able to solve any of these. And guaranteed on all your step exams, you're going to get questions like this. You just have to kind of see it enough and kind of play with it to understand how to solve these things. So in this situation, positive predictive value is top left going to the right. So we're going to have uh, top left is 90 divided by 90 plus 170. And that's going to give us, um, what, 260 over 90. And if we do all our, our math, it should come up to around about 34, 34, 6.
right? And that's going to give us answer choice A. Now, that may seem like a lot, but at the end of the day, if we were to, if we would have just zeroed our focus in on these two boxes and did it a little bit quicker, um, I think, you know, I, I think would have saved us a lot of time. But the good part about this problem is I don't care if you get any of these things, you're going to get them right. So it's better to take that extra 30 seconds, do the math. This is one of the few, few pieces of the step one or step two or even step three exam where you know when you leave you're going to get this question right. So make sure you study these. Now the last one, uh, this one uh, is again sent in by one of your comrades here. Uh, it says to always look long one like this. Always go down the, go down the last to the actual, to the actual question, and it says uh, the recurrence the recurrence rate um, on standard therapy is found to be eight percent. In order for the FDA to approve uh, KM twenty eight, what is the maximum incidence of the recurrent of recurrent disease acceptable uh, for women treated with KM plus standard therapy? All right, so uh, pretty wordy there. The key with this one, the reason I like this question is because at some point in this exam, you know, if you don't, if you don't know the formulas or for some reason it's escaping you, just go with logic, okay? Now, if you were to get all technical on this problem, you know, ARR, attributable risk reduction minus the relative risk, okay, and that'll, and that'll put everybody to sleep. But ask us, what are they asking us here? A study is designed to evaluate the efficacy of a new drug, KM28. The study will compare KM28 plus standard care versus standard care alone. Okay, so it's like if I add this drug to standard care, is it any better than standard care alone? With regard to decreasing the incidence, number of new cases, of recurrent breast cancer, the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, will approve the new drug if K KM28 plus standard of care decreases the rate of breast cancer recurrence by at least 40% compared to standard therapy alone. The recurrence rate of standard therapy is found to be 8%. Okay, so this appears to be our, uh, a target. We just got to beat that target by 40% um, in order for FDA to approve it. Okay, so blah, 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 blah. So here's baseline, right? It's 8%. And again, in math, we don't like uh, percents. We like to work with decimals. So the new thing has to beat, has to at least do this plus 40% of that, right? So very simple. What's 40% of uh, 0 0.08? Now, if you don't know, you just kind of, you know, times 0.4 times 0.08 or however you like to put them on top or bottom. Use the calculator. Uh, but at the end of the day, 32, and there's three decimal spots. So it's going to be 0 0.032 or 3.2%. But now, that's not what the answer is, right? That's just the 40% of the 0.8, which we have to meet anyways. So now where I said, where does this logic come in at? Is do you think that this new drug is gonna is gonna increase that point? Is is it gonna be 0 0.08 plus the 0 0.032, or is it gonna be less than? Because what they're saying is, if they just did nothing and used the standard of care, you got 0 0.08 percent. So if you're gonna have a new drug, you sure as heck better have that thing go down, right? It better go less than the 0 0.08. So you're gonna take that 0 0.03, which is 40 percent of it, and actually subtract it. Okay, you're going to subtract it from that, and you're going to get um, 7, 4, 0, right? There's our decimal. We turn decimals into percents like that, and you should get 4.8, which is right there. But the, the whole key to this problem right here is just to understand, sometimes if you can't remember, remember formulas and stuff, try to use some basic logic. Here was our basic target this thing the new the new guy had to beat it by at least 40 percent which gave us this and we would have decreased it on down okay so again logic for that so these are just a few of the questions that were uh, actually were, were sent in feel free to send some more uh, if I can at least get maybe three or four then I, I don't mind uh, doing a quick video on it but if you have any questions on these other topics uh, you know now that I'm kind of out of residency, I got plenty of time to kind of work on some of this stuff, but these are just some of the, you know, I think the sheets that I always had kind of when I was studying for step one and even in the residency, I, I used them. Um, but you can see there's, there's pharmacology, uh, there's plenty of psychiatry, obviously. 
Um, and then, of course, there's a nice, I like the genetics one. That's always kind of a cute one, too. But these are these sheets. And what I did was I took them, uh, you know, I kind of made these sheets. And so I could take them to a, if I was at that Panera or, or wherever I was at studying, you know, that I had them laminated so if they got, they would never get wet or torn up or anything like that. But pretty much got every subject uh, through here. So if there's a subject that you like, just put it in the comment box. Maybe we can kind of uh, review that. Uh, for you. But hope this was helpful and we'll see you in the next video.